And um, then you have the Ibogaine, which was um, really interesting for me because when I was the chair at Florida, and even before that, when I was a neuroscience professor at the University of Miami was Deb Mash, who did the original work. And she had even set up her own kind of rehab in, in uh, an island, of, I think, um, for use of it in opioid use disorders. It, it's remarkable when it, it, that you know, some of these people just changed their lives. And you know, there are now a number of advocates out there, some of them politicians, very successful ones who have had traumatic brain injuries, you know, and uh, who have found, got great relief from I, Ibogaine, right? It's the use for, for one for traumatic brain injury, and but it's the other on uh, opioid use disorder, uh, where as you we all know, the uh, craving Post stopping is enormous and uh, unbelievable and difficult to control, and and the responses there for the ibogaine are dramatic as well. I think you know the, the questions that one has is the you know obviously going to be difficult to do controlled trials, but you know there are ways of doing it. The the question is can you do this safely? It does look like when you the, that some of these clinics in Mexico do not where they're using the mag sulfate intravenously or some form of magnesium they they, they seem to be not having the cardiovascular problems that uh, I think were er, seen early in the development uh, so I think I think I think that problem is solvable most likely it's just the way it's going but that is going to be the big I think hurdle as well as